Get LA is brought to you by Keck Medicine of USC. More healthcare breakthroughs, more defense against disease, more home runs. That's the Keck effect. And by the all-new Mazda CX-5. Driving matters. Game 156. Clayton Kershaw about to tow the rubber for the 26th time at 17 and 4 at a 226 earn run average. Kershaw, as you know, has been beyond excellent when it comes to pitching the day after a Dodger loss. The Dodgers lost 2 1 last night. Kershaw this season, 14 starts following a Dodger defeat. He is 10 and 3 at a 2.05 earned run average. And here's the lineup he'll be facing on this final Sunday afternoon home season game here at Dodger Stadium. Gorky Hernandez has been battling a left wrist, but he's been battling the Dodgers tough with four hits in the first two games of the series. Tomlinson at second base. Panic is sitting it out with Kershaw going. Then Posey and Pence. Hundley the catcher hitting fifth. Brandon Crawford at shortstop hitting six. You got the Panda, Mac Williamson, and Chris Stratton pitching and batting ninth against the 29-year-old Clayton Kershaw. So much left to accomplish still before October for the Dodgers and for Clayton Kershaw. A win today keeps him near the top of the Cy Young race. Also, six strikeouts gets him to the 200 plateau for the seventh time in his career. It should be an exciting day for him. Kershaw on 142 starts in his career following a Dodger defeat. He is merely 68 and 30. Here comes the first pitch of the game to Gorky's Hernandez. He swings and misses, and we're underway. Hernandez at 258. And we mentioned uh, the other night in the year where they're going to be 61 home runs, 6,100 home runs hit. Gorky's Hernandez hasn't hit one since, since September of last year, and he still hasn't. That's Chris Taylor. We're underway. Second baseman, number 37, Kelby Tomlinson. So here's Kershaw. Two and a quarter ERA. It's the lowest in the league. He's seeking to become the first 18 game winner in the National League. He's in a pitched battle with Max Scherzer. For the Cy Young Award, one would think. Scherzer pitched today, six innings in New York. One run, three hits, struck out 10, and walked one. Tomlinson at 263. One home run, 11 runs batted in. And the Nationals have just beaten the Mets 3 to 2. Tomlinson takes a breaking ball inside. One ball, one strike. Dodgers began the day four and a half in front of Washington, four in the loss column. And after today, six games remain, three with the Padres here. Next weekend, the Dodgers are in Denver. And then that's it. Two and one to Tomlinson. One home run, 11 runs batted in. Joe Panic probably not terribly upset about sitting it out today with Kershaw on the hill. Panic, a left-handed hitter, but has hit lefties well. Two balls and two strikes. Kershaw, 194 strikeouts on the year, just 30 walks. Opponents hitting a measly 203 against him. Into right, and there's Curtis Granderson. <laughs> Well documented that Clayton Kershaw has dominated the Giants throughout his career. The two pitches that have helped him do that the most of his arsenal are his fastball and his curveball. The Giants have hit his slider at a little higher clip, and we've seen already here today curveballs at a very early stage. So now two out, and Buster Posey. Nothing, and one. Kershaw in his career against the Giants as uh, Paul mentioned has dominated
the 0 and 2. Interesting note about Kershaw. There are three teams against whom he has had a losing record in his career. The Rangers, the Pirates, and the Phillies. No balls and two strikes to Posey. He's done. Kershaw has an easy first inning. Nothing across. Taylor, Seager, and Bellinger to hit for the Dodgers in the bottom of the first against Chris Stratton. Afternoon. Beginning with Chris Taylor, Corey Seager, and Cody Bellinger. Justin Turner still sitting it out. Should be back in action tomorrow. Granderson in right, Forsyth at third. Chase Upley at second base. Grandall hitting seventh. Peterson getting a start in left. Kershaw pitching and batting ninth against the 27-year-old right-hander Chris Stratton. Stratton had a great August, an ERA of 1.52, and you see down there in yellow, three and one with a 2.17 in his last six starts. That's because of that August, but September has not been as kind, and the fastball command has been off, and the league has been hitting it hard. Dodgers, not the best fastball hitting club in the league, but they will be looking for it here today. Taylor, 289, stepping in. Still looking for his first hit of the series. Seeger and Bellinger to follow. As Chris Stratton out of Tupelo, Mississippi. Delivers a strike, and it's nothing in one. 21 home runs, 69 runs batted in. Stratton on 0 and 1. Now 0 and 2. Stratton in his last six starts, 3 and 1, a 217 earn run average. Remember that game where we had the two rain delays in San Francisco? He got to pitch to one batter. That was before the first rain delay. The 0-2. Grounded slowly to first. And the underhanded flip from Posey. One gone, bottom of the first. Short stop number five. Corey Seager. Now Corey Seager, Seager coming up. For Street, uh, Seager, it's been a struggle in his last 19 games. He has struck out 17 times. He is 10 for his last 59. That's the 169 batting average you're looking at. So Seager down to 295. Takes outside. One ball and no strikes. The overall season for Corey Seager has been fantastic, but he does want to get back on the beam before those October games start. Battling an ankle, battling a right elbow. It could be affecting his swing a little bit. If it's going to stay that way, he's looking for ways to fight through that and find a swing that he can use. With Bellinger on deck, Seager drills it to the left. It's two and one.
Dodgers have lost 21 of their last 28. And still the best record in the league, best record in Major League Baseball. But since August 26th, only the Tigers have a record like the Dodgers, 7 and 21. Seager slices it off to the left and out of play. Well, one of the reasons is the Dodgers averaging just three runs per game in the last 28. That's dead last. Team batting average is 205, which is also dead last. So they're struggling offensively, and they need to turn it around. Through the first of August, through August 25th, Dodgers averaged over five runs per game. We're hitting 257 as a team, so they're 52 points below where they were on the 25th of August. And the ERA has ballooned as well. Seeger down on strike, second out of the first. First baseman, number 35. Cody Bellinger. Stratton a struggle with the fastball late, but this is a nice two-seamer that leaks back really over the middle of the plate. Corey Seager must have been looking for something. He usually is very aggressive on that pitch. Seager down on strikes, and that's been an issue. Corey now has struck out 18 times in the last 19 games. Now Bellinger takes low on outside. One ball, no strikes. Bellinger with the 39 home runs, most ever by a National League rookie, more than Frank Robinson and Wally Berger. What an accomplishment it would be to get number 40. And who would want to stop there? But to get 40 out of the way here on Fan Appreciation Day would be fantastic. 2 0, oh, Bellinger. It's 2 and 1. He made a swing like he was going to try and hit number 40 right there. Curtis Granderson is on deck. Now two and two. Both of the last two pitches that got swings and misses. You could hear the groans from the fans anticipating something good. High, it's three and two. Bellinger hit 292 in August, 288 this month, so he's been consistent. Fly ball to center field, and Gorky Hernandez is there in a one, two, three inning for Chris Stratton. We'll go to the second, Kershaw to face Pence, Hudley, and Brandon Crawford. Rover Performance Spotlight. 
only Hugh Casey at a higher winning percentage than the fella to my right. And the left-hander out on the hill this afternoon. Maddox and Seaver right up there enjoying their time against the Giants. I think that's the only category that's left where Clayton is behind me, but I hopefully he ties me today. Hunter Pence takes a strike, and it's nothing in one. Pence at 255 with a dozen home runs. And it's outside, one ball and one strike. Nick Hundley on deck, Brandon Crawford to follow. Pence. Did he go around? No, says first base umpire Sean Barber. It's two balls and a strike. Pence in his career not so good against Clayton Kershaw, but then again, who is? Hitting 132, 10 for 76. Here's a 2 1. Now two balls and two strikes. Kershaw looking to become the winningest pitcher in baseball in search of his 18th win. And the 2 2 is on the way. Pence with a base hit into center. Leadoff single for Hunter Pence here in the second inning. A very sharp breaking ball and Audi pitch cast will show you where the location was down there around the knees actually would have been below the knees if it would have continued on but Pence caught it out front of the plate and was able to elevate it to center field. So Kershaw's pass to Grandall intercepted by the bat of Hunter Pence. His 121st hit of the year Nick Hundley coming up. Pence has stolen a couple of bases. He's been caught three times. Hundley, eight home runs and 30 runs batted in. To the right, Granderson and Bellinger both run out of room. Nick Hundley in his career against Kershaw, not too bad really. 12 for 47. That's a 255 clip. And he's done well this year against lefties. That's almost a batting title against Clayton. There's a strike. Nothing in two. Well, this year, opponents are hitting 203 against Kershaw. This is his 26th start, so he's missed about a half a dozen starts this year with that back issue. And the 0 2. Sliced foul. Granderson going to run out of room. It seems without the health issues for Clayton this year only his 26th start that he would have been a shoe in for the Cy Young. Now it'll be a race going for number 18 here. But if he'd have gotten a full metal jacket of starts this year and stayed healthy probably would already have his 20th win. Seventeen and four Kershaw. And a 226 ERA. We're scoreless in the second inning. And Hundley is done. Second strikeout of the game for Kershaw. A little cut fastball slash slider. Sometimes it's hard to differentiate between those two pitches. If he throws the slider, sometimes it has a little more tilt to it. Now Crawford coming up. Branded at 249. And 14 home runs. Grew up in Northern California and came to play for the Bruins. To second base. Utley, Seeger, Bellinger. 
One, two, three for Kershaw. No runs and a hit. We'll go to the bottom of the second. Branderson, Forsythe, and Utley will be coming up. senior athlete then nominate them for a chance to be named a spectrum sports championship drive scholar athlete and receive a $2,500 college scholarship go to spectrumchamp.com now for more information Granderson will lead it off for the Dodgers in the home half of the second then Logan Forsythe and Chase Utley Granderson the deadline acquisition has been a struggle for him since coming to the Dodgers, has 25 home runs on the year. He takes a breaking ball for a strike, nothing and one. Granderson with 13 hits since coming to the Dodgers, six of them for home runs, including a grand slam. Dave Roberts media scrum before the game. Alon asked the question about Curtis Granderson, and Dave Roberts was assuring all the fans that he will definitely be on the postseason roster. And will continue to get opportunities to get everything squared away here in the coming days. Well, six games left. Three with the Padres Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Dodgers will travel to Denver on Thursday next weekend with the Rockies. Come back a week from tonight. Shut her down until Friday, October the 6th, when the National League Division Series will begin here at Dodger Stadium against somebody. Here's the 2 2. We've started to see signs of Curtis coming out. The more and more balls that he hits the center field or the opposite way, a foul ball like that, the better off he's going to be. He's been spinning on a lot of balls, hitting most of the balls hard foul. With the shift on on the right side of the infield, he'll dunk it into right field for a hit. Tomlinson tried to make an over the shoulder catch and couldn't reach it. A little better sign. Off speed pitch. He still has enough swing left to not pull it foul or swing and miss at it. Keep it in fair territory and find a base hit. Nick Hundley behind the plate. He has thrown out 27% of would be base stealers and Forsyth. Tends to see an awful lot of pitches almost always is taking the first pitch. 226 on the year. And he takes a strike. It's nothing in one. Utley on deck, then Grandall. Forsyth, five home runs, 32 runs batted in. Bratton missing high. 
Logan Forsyth's emergence from his slump is completely opposite of Curtis Granderson. Granderson trying to not be so pull happy where Logan is creating more bat speed and more being more aggressive to the pull side of the field and seems to be working. One and one. Granderson can run. He's stolen six out of eight. A little bit more of a surprise runner at this point in his career, but still a very good base runner. Being held on by Buster Posey. Well hit to right center field. Well back there, and it is off the wall. Granderson will be held at third. The Dodgers are in business. Second and third, and nobody out. For Forsyth, his 19th double of the year. The Volkswagen replay will have this double from Logan Forsyth, and it's a good look with the bat speed that he's starting to create now. More leverage, ball carrying a little better here during a day game, but that ball was still very well struck and in the perfect place. And here comes Chase Utley. At 230 with eight home runs and 33 runs batted in. Dodgers looking to draw first blood. At least 16 for 71 with runners in scoring position. It's early, it's scoreless, and Bochy's playing his infield back and into the glove of Buster Posey. Gets over Posey's glove. It's a double into the corner, and the Dodgers have a 2 0 lead. Chase with the perfect plan, wanting to find something to the right side of the diamond, even if it's an out. You move the runner to third, you score the run. The infield was back, got the pitch he wanted with a fastball in, but hit it right at him. Now Grandal coming up. Grandal. At 242. And he takes inside and low. One ball and no strikes. Twenty home runs, fifty-two runs batted in for Yasmani Grandal. There's a strike. One and one. Brandall, 18 of his 20 home runs have come from the left side of the plate. Granderson in foresight at third and second with one out in the second inning. In the left. Granderson's going to tag. He's on his way home. Throw to the plate. Safe. And no throw to third. Sacrifice fly for Grandal. Granderson slides under the tag, and the Dodgers take a one to nothing lead. As Monte Grandal lifts the fly ball to left, it's going to be close. Williamson with a strong, accurate throw, but Granderson the slide to the plate, beating the tag just barely. Nice heads up base running also by Logan Forsythe. Watching that ball go home and getting over to third. The throw on the first base side of the plate was the difference between Granderson being out and safe. And Forsyth with the throw coming through goes to third. Now two out and Jock Peterson coming up. Peterson at 208, 11 home runs and 33 runs batted in. One ball, no strikes to Jock Peterson. Peterson in the month of September is hitting 071. One ball and one strike. So Jock, after having been sent down to Oklahoma City, 
still trying to find his swing. Grandall leads, or rather, Forsyth leads from third, and it's one and two to Jock Peterson. A Granderson single, a Forsyth double. After Utley lined out, Grandall a sack fly. But Grandall is 53rd, run batted in. Chris Stratton's 33rd pitch. Peterson will see another. Looks like Jock is using eye black for his peripheral vision also. As long as those stripes are. One ball, two strikes, and two out. And the pitch. Two balls and two strikes. This could confirm that he is superstitious. That he's going with war paint today. Looking for something to turn around the numbers and his season to feel comfortable in the batter's box and get some production. We'll put the eye black on on the back of the bus while it was moving. <laughs> but it's a home game, Charlie. <laughs> and again here somehow, three and two. That wasn't a good excuse for him. <laughs> Kershaw's on deck. Dodgers with the early 1-0 lead. As Peterson awaits, Stratton delivers, and he got under it. Right side, Posey will run out of room. About 15 rows back. So the Dodgers with the 1-0 lead, when Kershaw, as you know, gets any sort of run support, he's money in the bank. In his career, when the Dodgers give him three runs to play with, he's 112 and eight. Four runs, 96 and 0. Five runs, 71 and 0. Three and two. Peterson takes inside, ball four. So Kershaw with a chance to. Provide an extra run for himself. That was opening day at Dodger Stadium. In April of 13. There's Bumgarner. He's got three home runs this year. Kershaw. Eight hits, seven singles, and a double. Takes a strike and it's nothing in one. Tallest man on the field today is the home plate umpire, Jordan Baker. He's six seven. He's towering over Kershaw, who's six three. Which raises the question: Will we see more high strikes? I would think it'd be easier for him, but if he gets down into a little deeper crouch, he can get down there and see the low pitch. And the umpires are evaluated with lasers now, so uh, he's going to have to find the correct strike zone no matter how tall he is. In his fifth big league season at Oklahoma State, Jordan Baker. Runner goes, and no throw. So Peterson with a stolen base. Late in the game, that's considered defensive indifference. Peterson with his fourth stolen base of the year. The danger, of course, in throwing down. Forsyth could be running home. Kershaw takes low two and two. Kershaw at a buck seventy. Forsyth at third, Peterson at second, and Stratton's 42nd pitch for the right side. The Panda. 
There's across the diamond, and the Dodgers are done. A Granderson single, a Forsyth double, a sack fly for Grandall. Dodgers won nothing after two. L.A. is brought to you by the all-new 2017 Chrysler Pacifica, the new benchmark of minivans, and by Jack in the Box. Come try the new $4.99 Smokey Jack Burger Combo with small fries and a small drink. Limited time only. So the Dodgers with an early one to nothing lead, and Kershaw to face the bottom third of the giant lineup in the top half of the third inning. Pablo Sandoval, Mac Williamson, and Chris Stratton. So the Nationals won earlier today. Dodgers four in front of Washington. Their best record in the league and home field advantage throughout the National League portion of the playoffs. Dodgers began the day. One in front of Cleveland. For best record overall and home field advantage should the Dodgers and Indians face one another in the World Series. Miles to go before we sleep. Kershaw just 20 pitches through the first two innings and a couple of strikeouts. Sandoval fouls it back and it's nothing and one. Well, Sandoval took the money and ran to Boston and then came walking back to San Francisco when things didn't work out too well. In the hole it's short. Seeger throws him out. Well Seeger of course in that right elbow. No ill effects on that throw. He's had a couple of plays with the double play ball and that one where the arm has been stressed, but it looks like it has come through cleanly. Mac Williamson stepping in. Williamson at 203. The giant offense this year has just not done it all well. Bochi's team batting average is 248. 13th in the league. They're 14th in runs scored. 11th in hits. Hit the fewest home runs in the league. And the on base percentage of 308 ranks 14th. As a result, Giants enter play today at 61 and 94. Tied with the Phillies for the worst record in the league. Williamson takes low two and one.
Chris Stratton on deck. Dodgers one to nothing, top of the third, 85 degrees, perfect Sunday afternoon at Dodger Stadium as Kershaw delivers. Two and two. Fan Appreciation Day, one of the prizes, season tickets to next year's season. You also can call into the Dodgers and start registering for mini plans and season tickets for next year. They're going to give away some today. It's going to be a tough play. Brandahl underhanded flip. Williamson with an infield hit. Randall did all he could do, an underhanded flip, and couldn't get enough mustard on it. And Williamson runs pretty well. It was a foot race between Grandall and the ball, and Williamson in 90 feet. And watch out for Cody Bellinger's toe right there. Williamson was never inside that runner's lane. He was to the left of the foul line. You can't be called out unless the ball hits you. So if the ball would have hit him. He might have had an issue. One out, one on, and here is Stratton. He's got one sacrifice this year. Go, go, go. Bellinger on the short hop. Stratton's second sacrifice. Williamson goes to second base. And that'll bring up Corky Hernandez. Hernandez been fighting a left wrist injury. It's certainly shown no ill effects in this series. He's gone four for seven. He hasn't hit a home run since September 13th of last year. Kershaw delivers a strike. Twenty nine pitches only six balls. So Kershaw on top of his game early. One and one. Hernandez was two for four last night stolen base and a couple of runs scored. One and two. Kelby Tomlinson is on deck. Pirates beat the Cardinals today. And the Cubs are shutting out the Brewers in the sixth inning in Milwaukee. Five zip. Two balls and two strikes. The Rockies have scored a run in the top half of the first in San Diego. Now it's the Padres turn to hit at Petco. Here's a 2 2. We'll do it again. Seeing anything in particular about Kershaw to this point? He's throwing the ball really well. I like the fact that he broke the curveball out early because, in some ways, he slows the lineup down that's kind of free and easy, even playing with house money because the Giants don't have much to play for. So. You think they're going to come out swinging hard against your fastball when it's a strike and he slowed him down right away by using the breaking ball early. On two and two to Hernandez with Kelby Tomlinson on deck. In the left sprinting toward the line Peterson runs out of room. Peterson Taylor and Granderson in the outfield today. Peterson making a fashion statement with his eye block.
Not entirely sure what it is, but he's making a statement nonetheless. Is it fashion or is it function? Here's a 2 2. Three balls and two strikes to Corky Hernandez. Infield playing back and the outfield playing Hernandez as if he was a left handed pole hitter. Kershaw on three and two. Strikes him out. Strikeout number three for Clayton Kershaw. No runs, one hit, one left. One nothing Dodgers as we go to the bottom half of the third. The backstage Dodgers go behind the scenes at Tommy Lasorda's 90th birthday celebration here at Chavez Ravine. Don't miss backstage Dodgers brought to you by Hankook Tire next Friday after the postgame only on Sportsnet LA. We go to the bottom of the third and the Giants and the Dodgers. Dodgers one to nothing. Top of the order. Chris Taylor against Chris Stratton who struggled through the second inning. Taylor bounced out in his first at bat takes a strike. Dodgers sent six batters to the plate in the second. Taylor needed 26 pitches, but before all was said and done, the Dodgers took the one nothing lead, and Taylor with a fly ball to center field. Win playing some tricks on Gorky Hernandez, first out of the third inning. Wind is blowing five. in and Hurry toward left Seager. field this afternoon. Maybe a little bit of the change of the seasons in the air. Normally doesn't happen on day games throughout the summer. Well, as we get toward the playoffs, and we'll have a lot of those five o'clock starts to accommodate the East Coast time zone, prime time back east. We'll be dealing with shadows, sunset, dusk. But as you can see, just a picture perfect Sunday afternoon, the San Gabriel Mountains glistening off in the distance. Seeger struck out in his first at bat. It's one ball, one strike. Bellinger on deck. Seeger to left. Williamson back. And in front of the scoreboard, he'll make the catch. Number 35, Cody Bellinger. 
Now Bellinger coming up. He flied to center in his first at bat. Cody at 273, a home run away from 40, and six RBIs away from 100. Second in the National League in home runs. Curtis Granderson is on deck. The shift on on the right side of the infield, only Sandoval left on the left side. And what teams have done when they're placing the shift on Bellinger, they keep their third baseman closer to the line than ordinarily they might because Bellinger's not afraid to bunt against the shift. Probably got a half a dozen hits that way this year. So Bochi has fine-tuned his defense a bit for Bellinger on two and one. The left. Slicing. Out of play. Puig, who uh, jammed his ankle sliding into second base last night, which turned out to be the final out of the game when he opted not to slide. Not playing today. Way outside. It sounded like it was an unauthorized attempt and then not to slide made even things a little bit worse and Dave Roberts given him a chance to just kind of take a breather. So Puig. Limped off the field as the Dodgers fell two to one last night. That was the final out of the game. And that's how you counteract the shift. Bellinger runs well. He's on his way to second. The throw's not going to be in time. If it's not Chris Taylor, then Cody Bellinger's the fastest runner the Dodgers have. And that was his 25th double of the year. Uh, he's developed a two strike approach and he's developed ways to find base hits when that's all he needs and he knew with two outs right away he was going to go for the double abbreviates the swing chops it down the third baseline and with two outs there was no hesitation around first wasn't looking for a sign he knew the risk was worth the reward now let's see if Granderson can plate him Granderson a single to right in his first at bat. So Puig is sitting and watching on this Sunday afternoon. What more can you tell us, Alana? Well, I can tell you, Charlie, that last night after the ball game on that stolen base mishap, that was probably the most upset that I have seen Dave Roberts in a post-game press conference all year long. He said that he did not have the green light to take that stolen base. He doesn't have an answer as to why he didn't slide. He said as far as him being being benched today, he said, I have the guys in the lineup that I can trust. He wanted Puig to take a couple of moments to think about what had happened. But uh, he wouldn't go too much into it other than the fact that he was incredibly upset last night when that did not go well. Sounds like a benching, doesn't it? Now here's Granderson with Bellinger leading off second. One ball, one strike. One thing about Dave Roberts throughout his career as a player, coach, and now manager, he plays the game right, he plays the game hard, and when it doesn't happen, he doesn't like it. Of course, Dave has one of the most memorable stolen bases in postseason history with the Red Sox. He had a bang bang throw from Jorge Posada, and everybody in the Western Hemisphere and on the other side of the planet knew he was going to try and steal. And he did. And thus began the U turn of the Queen Mary of the Red Sox in 2004. Granderson done and the inning is over. No runs, one hit, one left. After three, the Dodgers won nothing.
the world is Alana Rizzo. All right, Charlie, we all know that L.A. traffic is a bear. We get it. But the Los Angeles Dodgers have a solution when you're here at Dodger Stadium. This is a brand new thing called the Extra Innings Lounge. It's right here for the final home games of the regular season. Great city views after post game, but there's other things here as well. It's open from the seventh inning until one hour after the final out. They serve beer, wine, soft drinks, and coffee. You can get here right by accessing either the top deck seating area or by walking up the stairs from the reserve level. In addition to the great views that you can see easy post game access to the top of the park team store as well as the Dodger Stadium Express Metro bus stop and the lot 11 Uber lot. Talk about room with a view. Kelby Tomlinson. Off to the right and out of play Tomlinson fly to right in his first at bat. I wonder if I can change my parking spot to up near there. <laughs> you know people here. <laughs> Go up there for a cup of coffee while I wait for traffic. That's what you're going with. No balls, two strikes. Tomlinson takes inside, checks his swing. First base umpire, Sean Barber. And it's one and two. Tomlinson, Posey, and Pence to hit for the Giants. We're in the fourth. Tomlinson fly to right in his first at bat. Went around that time. He's done. That's the fourth strikeout for Kershaw. Two in a row. First out of the fourth. Clayton Kershaw's curveball is dominant today. Let's take a look with the Morongo Casino slow mo cam. You can't slow the breakdown on that, but you can slow the ball down. That thing it had some depth. Buster Posey stepping in. Posey 248 in his career against Kershaw struck out in his first at bat and takes inside one ball no strikes. Posey leads the Giants with 150 base hits. Second hop Seagrass a double clutch makes the play there's two gone. And Pence pass. coming up. Pence with a single to center in his first at bat. A rare occurrence, a hit off Kershaw. He's now 11 for 77. That's about a buck 35. One ball, no strikes. 12 home runs and 64 runs batted in for Hunter Pence. About 30 points below his career average this year. He takes a strike. And is one and one. Pence with his single to second in the second inning. Broken 0 for 11 streak. Two out, nobody on in the fourth. Kershaw in cruise control. And the 1-1. One, one. one ball, two strikes. Hunter Pence looking for something off speed right there. Clayton shaking and deking him about four times and then throwing the fastball. A lot of times with that many shakes, the pitcher's trying to get to some pitch that's very unusual. One ball, two strikes to Pence. Pence has 121 hits this year. 26 of them are infield hits. He's fourth in the league with infield hits. He's one of those guys bust out of the box immediately. And it, it's helped him. Is this going to be the 27th? Yep. So Pence is two for two. He hits the ball hard. He hits the ball soft. And you hit the ball hard. Infielders play deep. And when they play deep and then you hit it soft, you got a chance to get one of those. And he's gotten a few of them this year. 
Logan just not able to get it in his palm of his hand there. Hits his wrist, and that's going to clank every time. 27th infield hit for Hunter Pence. Nick Hundley coming up. Hundley struck out in his first at bat. Over the head of Utley and into center field. Penn stays put. First and second, two out. And Brandon Crawford's coming up. Number 35, Brandon Crawford. Utley with a perfectly timed leap. He's a couple inches too short. He got in on him. He didn't hit it extremely hard, but he hit it the right height. Now Crawford bounced into a double play on the only pitch he saw in his first at bat. Brandon Crawford leads the Giants in doubles and RBIs. He's second with 14 home runs. Takes a strike. It's nothing in one. Crawford at 248. Kershaw about ready to throw his 50th pitch of the game. He has struck out four. Hasn't walked anybody. An infield hit for Pence. He's at second. Hundley the single to center. He's at first. And Crawford swings and misses. Nothing in two. Pablo Sandoval is on deck. No balls and two strikes. Crawford to right. Granderson is there. That'll do it. No runs, two hits, two left. And three and a half. Kershaw and the Dodgers. One to nothing. MLB.tv every night on every device. Watch every out of market game live. Plus, get a free subscription to it. Bat Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. After three and a half, Dodgers, one run, three hits. The Giants, no runs and four base hits. Granderson single, a four-side double, a sacrifice fly for Grandall in the second inning. It'll be Forsyth Utley and Yasmani Grandall to hit in the bottom of the fourth. 
this drop dead gorgeous Sunday afternoon. Final Sunday of the regular season here at Dodger Stadium. And it's Fan Appreciation Day. The Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday games are with the Padres. Thursday, the Dodgers travel to Denver and finish up the regular season with the Rockies next weekend. The Rockies may still be playing for something in the wild card race. The 0 1 to Forsyth takes outside one ball, one strike. Bottom of the second in San Diego, Colorado, and the Padres are tied at two. One one from Chris Stratton. High and inside. But he went around. Sean Barber with a clinch fist. One and two to Forsyth. The Rockies began the day a game in front of Milwaukee, a game and a half in front of the Cardinals. For the final wild card spot. Pirates beat the Cardinals four to one, and the Cubs shut out the Brewers five to nothing. So Colorado, a win today would be a big deal for him. Here's the two two. Forsyth takes high and inside. Three balls and two strikes. They could pick up a game. On Milwaukee, move two in front. And two and a half in front of the Cardinals. Forsyth to right, and Pence is there. Number 26, Chase Utley. Chase Utley with second and third, and nobody out back in the second inning. Whistle the line drive, and Buster poses. Took it out of the sky and cost Utley a double and the Dodgers two runs. Grandal on deck. One ball and no strikes. In Seattle this afternoon, bottom half of the fourth, the Indians have a two to nothing lead. The Dodgers at 98 and 57, the Indians at 97 and 58. So the Indians could actually overtake the Dodgers for best record in baseball. Relevant to the Dodgers only in so far as should those two teams, the Dodgers and the Indians, play in the World Series. Team with a better record would have home field advantage in the best of seven. Three and one. Utley after lining out in his first at bat at 229. Now it's three and two. Grandal on deck. Utley running hard. Sandoval. Double pumps can't hang on to it. Very much like Hunter Pence. Chase Utley, first step out of the box. He's all out to the finish line. Cued off the end. Sandoval has been a good third baseman at times, but on this one right here, never really gets it clean. Chase Utley off the end of the bat, the first clue that you're off and running on that one and can smell a hit. And that is how it is ruled. One out infield hit for Utley, and Grandal is stepping up. To center field, Hernandez going back, and it is gone! A home run! 
Yasmani Grandal over the wall, straightaway center, his 21st of the year. And the Dodgers take a three to nothing lead. Grandal has knocked in all three. Take a look at the Carl's Cam replay of Yasmani's big fly to center field. Clayton Kershaw's last start, Austin Barnes caught. Today, Yasmani gets the nod and showing the trust in his bat and abilities behind the plate to Dave Roberts paid off. Well, Grandall has been struggling down the stretch and he's had a, a good afternoon. 19 of his 21 home runs. Come from the left side of the plate. Now Peterson, who walked in his first at bat, takes outside. Grandall with the home run, stepping into the batter's box, was hitting 082 this month. So a much needed home run. Base hit for Yasmani Grandall. Seeger and one of the hitting instructors, Sean Wooten. That was a fifth home run Stratton has given up in 52 innings. The Dodgers lead it by three. Two and one to Peterson. Three balls and a strike. A little bleeder for a base hit for Utley and a big blast for Grandall. Two in the fourth, three nothing Dodgers. Peterson takes a walk, second time he has walked. Now Kershaw coming up. Boy, it's been a long year for Bruce Bochy, his 11th season with the Giants. Kershaw bounced to third in his first at bat. Peterson has stolen three out of six this year. Once at the minor league level, Jock Peterson was a 30 30 man. 30 home runs, 30 stolen bases in the same year as Kershaw fouls it off to the left. No balls and a strike. Little butcher boy play, shows bunt, pulls it back to swat it towards third, hopefully, with Sandoval pulled in. No balls and a strike. Now Kershaw bunts it. Foul. And it's nothing in two. In Peterson's final season in Albuquerque in 2014, he had 33 home runs and stole 30 bases. At the major league level, he has a total of 13. In his career, the 0 2. Perfect punt up the first baseline. Peterson goes to second on Kershaw's fifth sacrifice of the season. Center fielder, Chris Taylor. So Chris Taylor coming up, and Taylor is 0 for 2. Taylor on the year at 289, but in the month of September, just 212. Dodger offense in September has slowed down noticeably. As a team, they're hitting 210. It was interesting to listen to Justin Turner on the pregame show. 
how he talked about if we get in to the playoffs and are really hot in these last seven games, we still have four days off before we play our first game. And if we go in kind of cold, we'll still have four days off to get it going. Taylor takes outside, and that allows Peterson to take third base on the ricochet. That ball was spiked well in front of home plate. Hundley, I think, takes it right off the mask. 60 feet, six inches from the pitching plate to home plate, but that one was a far cry from that distance. Years ago, catchers, A, didn't have the hockey goaltenders with us, and B, didn't have the hard hat underneath the straps of the mask. So now it's two and one. And Seeger is hoping to get in at bat here in the fourth. Grandall's two run home run in the inning has given the Dodgers a three nothing lead. And Peterson is 90 feet away from another run. Three balls and a strike. So what Turner Turner's point is perfectly logical. You feel good going into getting ready for the postseason. But you still have four days off. You feel rotten going into the postseason. You still have four days off. And the narrative on that rest and how you got into it will be written on how well you do that first series. Taylor to right, slicing toward the corner. Pence can't make the play. Convergence of Hunter Pence, the wall, and fans being excited to maybe getting it. Wow, it's almost fan interference if he gets all the way over there. They might take a look at that. It's not interference when a player reaches into the stands, but when a fan comes into the playing field area. It can be fan interference. And it looks like they're going to have a pretty good case if they take a look at this. And they will. First base umpire Sean Barber made the call. And Mike Everett, the crew chief, Please will the put the headsets on. Show waiting on the big board here and a lot of groans coming from the fans as you see Hunter Pence crash into the wall and also the fan there in the Dodger blue shirt reaching into the field of play and tried to steal his glove like he was going to get away with it and he didn't even have a front row seat it looks like he came from the third or fourth row to come down there because once that action happens he's returning way past the front row. Bad hands and an attempted thief. With witnesses. Lots and lots of witnesses. So the umpires here are looking at the big scoreboard. And the fans are watching the replay. The shot we had of the fan with the Dodger Blue top on he had already tried changed his disguise and took his hat off that'll trying, fool him trying to not be recognized and I think he'll probably get pointed out <laughs> fan interference or not and he tried to steal Pence's glove Well, the fan has been thrown out. And Taylor has been called out. I guess that's a double play.
LA is brought to you by your Southern California Toyota dealers. Toyota's clearance countdown is on. Get huge savings on the last of the 2017 Corollas. As we head to the fifth inning. Dodgers three runs. And six base hits. Two run home run. Here goes Monty Grandal in the fourth. As we go to the fifth, the bottom third of the giant lineup. Sandoval, Williamson, and Stratton. And so far, it's been a, an outstanding performance for Clayton Kershaw. First pitch, Sandoval fouls it off to the right, and it's nothing in one. Sandoval bounced to short in his first at bat. Pops it into short center field. Utley is out. In comes Taylor calling off the veteran. There's the first out of the fifth. Number 51, Mac Williamson. No one wants to take their eye off of this ball with that high sky and battling the sun. Chase Utley recognizing at the very last minute, Tris Taylor's voice gets out of the way. It's always easier for the guy coming in to make the catch than the fella drifting backwards. Williamson, an infield hit in his first at bat. It's nothing in one. Tim Fedorovich is in the giant on deck circle, so it may be the end of the line for Stratton. And that is uh, Josh Osich. Up the middle. Utley can't get it. Williamson, a one out single to center. And here comes Fedorovich. Flex off the mound, puts a little different spin on the ball, and Chase Utley will tell you, I should at least maybe got a glove on that. A little frustrated with himself. Well, he's made some outstanding plays this year, and I can see why he raises the bar so much on himself. FedEx. When he was at North Carolina, was a pitcher and a catcher. I think there are a couple of games where he started and saved the same game. Because when he wasn't pitching, he was catching. And he bounces into a 6 4 3 double play. No runs, one hit, nobody left. After four and a half, Dodgers 3 0.
Join the 2018 Dodger family by signing up now for a season seat or mini plan wait list. Registered fans will be contacted by a Dodger season ticket representative on a first come first serve basis. Visit Dodgers.com season tickets or call 866-DODGERS today. New pitcher for the Giants is Ty Block. This is his 33rd appearance. He's made 24 starts, 8 and 12, an ERA of right around 5. Opponents hitting 286 against him. And Seeger takes under the knees. One ball, no strikes. Seeger is 0 for 2. He has struck out and flied to left. Seeger's been really struggling in the last, going on 20 games. He's 10 for his last 61 and has been struck out 18 times. One ball and one strike. Low and outside. And it's two and one. Bellinger then Granderson to hit in the bottom of the fifth. Ground ball to short. Couple of steps to his left. Crawford throws out Seeger. First out of the fifth inning. First baseman, Cody Bellinger. They keep playing the shift against Bellinger. In his last at bat, he singled the left. This time, they are not shifting against Bellinger. Because he can bunt for a base hit down the third baseline as well as anybody. And in his last at bat, the shift was on, and you had Sandoval playing about where the shortstop normally would. And Bellinger went with the pitch and doubled into the left field corner. So Bellinger's not a one trick pony, he doesn't just hit home runs. That was his 25th double. He's got four triples. And he's walked 59 times. On base percentage of 356. One and two. And he and Chris Taylor, the two fastest runners that the Dodgers have, and a fly ball to left field. That's Mac Williamson making the catch in foul territory. Two gone. Right field. Curtis Granderson. Granderson has scored a run after a single in the second inning. Came home to score on Grandall sack fly. Grandall in the fourth inning. Hit a two run home run. So it's a Grandall show three and the Giants nothing. Two balls and no strikes. Final three home games of the regular season beginning tomorrow night at 7-10. Padres are here. Travis Wood and Hugh Darvish. Tuesday night, Nelson Lamette and Alex Wood. Wednesday night, Clayton Richard. And Rich Hill from short right field. Tomlinson throws out Granderson. Block retires the Dodgers in order on this gorgeous Sunday afternoon. Dodgers 3 zip.
LA is brought to you by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop ChooseNissan.com. Of course, Justin Turner was voted on to the National League All-Star team. 20-something million votes. One of six Dodgers to play in the All-Star game this year. We head to the six, and Kershaw has been in cruise control as Corky's Hernandez takes a strike. It's nothing in one. Hernandez is 0 for 2. Kershaw needed just six pitches to get out of the fifth inning. He has thrown now 58, beginning the sixth. Top of the order for the Giants. One ball and one strike. Kelby Tomlinson on deck. And then Buster Posey. Final meeting of the season between these two clubs. The Dodgers have taken 10 of the 18 so far. And Hernandez into left center field for a base hit. That's going to split the seam. Roll to the wall. And Hernandez has a leadoff double in the sixth inning. Hernandez picks on a high fast ball and kind of hits a humpback line drive. Didn't kill this ball, but hit in the right place and on the line. His 20th double of the year. Dodgers three to nothing. And Kelby Tomlinson is coming up. Tomlinson is flied to right and struck out swinging. Tomlinson of his last 18 hits, nine have come against left handers. There's a strike, and it's nothing in one but 0 for 2 against Kershaw this afternoon. 18 of 20 first pitch strikes for Clayton. He has scattered six hits. He has struck out four. Hasn't walked anybody. No balls and two strikes to Tomlinson. Who has established himself as one of the better pinch hitters in the game. Tomlinson is hitting 302 this year as a pinch hitter in his career 333. It's like Dave Hansen. Manny Mota stuff. Oh, and two. Slowly hit to short. Throw to third base, and Gorky's Hernandez makes an unforgivable mistake. And the Dodgers say thank you very much. Poor base running and great fielding by Corey Seeger. Having to charge the ball one handed and quickly get the throw over there. A few things going on in your vision right there and made the throw to the outside part of the bag so he doesn't hit the runner and Forsyth with the quick easy tag. But all the work really done by Corey. Hernandez was out from here to Glendora. And his team is down by three. The ball is hit toward third base. Seeger had the play completely in front of him. And I'm guessing Cortez Hernandez is, is probably nowhere near Bruce Bochy at the moment. Now Posey. It's another reason you don't go. You got the best hitter coming up. Buster is 0 for 2. Posey's about to do something at the end of the season that no other catcher's ever done. He leads his club with 150 base hits. No other catcher in Major League history has ever led a team in hits for four seasons during his career. Not Bench, not Dickey, not Campy, not nobody. 
But Posey is about to do it for the fourth time. Two balls and one strike. Eighth year in the big leagues. And there hasn't been much he hasn't done. Hunter Pence is on deck. Dodgers with the three nothing lead one out one on in the sixth. Kershaw's 67th pitch. It's two and two. Kershaw has been locked in today. Two balls and two strikes. When Kershaw first came up, the only thing he didn't have was a pickoff move. Of course, when he was coming up, he didn't need one. He never had base runners on. When he got here, that that was worked on and now he's got one of the better pickoff moves in the game. <laughs> two balls two strikes one gone. In the sixth. Pence on deck. Tomlinson, who's stolen nine out of ten, leading off first. Faked running, and then returned. It's now three and two to Buster Posey. Trailing three to nothing, one out of the top of the sixth. Although Tomlinson has good speed. And Posey at the plate. Does Bochi send the runner? The answer is no. And a ground ball is short. Bobbled momentarily by Seaver. But the double play is completed. Third of the day for the Dodger defense. We'll go to the bottom of the six. Kershaw's working on the shutout. Dodgers up three to nothing in the bottom of the sixth inning as fan appreciation weekend continues here at Dodger Stadium and the fans certainly deserving of our Arco top tier play of the game. Actually they're the Arco top tier play of the entire year because fans have continued to break records of as far as attendance is concerned for the fifth straight year in all of Major League Baseball and the Dodgers certainly given back on this fan appreciation weekend round trip airfare and two tickets to spring training a batting practice meet and greet with the current player two tickets to the 2008 
team, Dodgers Foundation Blue Diamond Gala, a 48-inch television, four tickets to a Lakers game, tickets to a Kings game. The list goes on and on and on. Certainly fans deserving of this day because they have supported their team all season long. Charlie? Dodgers have averaged 46,428 per game. The Dodgers lead by a wide margin in paid attendance. Once again, drawing more than three and a half million fans. So the Dodgers thank you and another big crowd on the final Sunday of the regular season. Forsyth one for two. Tie block delivers a strike and is one and one. Dodgers average paid attendance of almost 47,000. Second in the league, the Cardinals draw 42,000 at home. And the Dodgers, by a significant margin, have the highest home attendance, and they're second in road attendance. And Forsyth saying, What more do I have to do to get a hit? So with all those big numbers, Buffo box office in the standings, all the more important. The Dodgers 53 and 24, best home record in Major League Baseball. Keep that in mind when the Diamondbacks, should the Dodgers and Diamondbacks have at it in the NLDS, the Yankees and Red Sox, they will be going hammer and tongue perhaps. Now, Kike Hernandez is pinch hitting for Chase Utley. With the lefty tie block. One ball, one strike, and one out. Kike deep to left, but foul. Well, Kiki, of course, has lots on his mind above and beyond baseball. Talked to him a bit on the plane the other night. Family is in good a shape as possible. The island isn't, as everybody knows. Drilled to left, but right there is Williamson. Alana. Well, guys, Charlie and Oral, Kiki Hernandez and Adrian Gonzalez, as well as a variety of other players on this Dodgers team, have done what they can throughout this weekend to not only raise awareness, but also raise funding for everything going on in Mexico, as well as Kike's home island of Puerto Rico. Kike's fiance, Mariana Vincente, and him also doing a lot of fundraising efforts online through their Instagram accounts and their Twitter accounts, trying to raise as much money as they possibly can for Puerto Rico. Kiki Hernandez was able to talk to his parents a couple of days ago, so he is okay. Mariana was able to talk to her dad about a day ago, but finally, finally heard from her mother. Everybody is safe, but obviously the island of Puerto Rico is severely devastated because of all of the flooding from Hurricane Irma as well as Hurricane Maria. Adrian Gonzalez and Yasiel Puig also doing a lot of efforts as well as the Los Angeles Dodgers Foundation and as an organization trying to raise money for those areas affected. Everybody coming together when that time is most needed. In both Puerto Rico and Mexico. Two balls and a strike to Grandal, who has knocked in all three runs today. A sack fly and a two run home run. Two balls and two strikes to Grandal. His 21st home run of the season. Dodgers with six hitters with at least 20 home runs. Of course, Bellinger leads the pack. Turner, Taylor, Seeger. A wealth of power on the Dodgers because Curtis Granderson has 25. He just didn't get him with all with the club. Grandall gets the first base. Now batting, 
Center fielder, number 31, Jock Peterson. Now here's Peterson coming up. Peterson has walked twice today. Peterson at 208 takes low and outside. One ball, no strikes. Kershaw has been cruising right along in the on deck circle. One ball, one strike to Jock Peterson. Who's really been struggling all year. Oh 54 in August, oh 71 in September. And a trip to Oklahoma City. Still trying to cure his ills. Outside and low, two and one. In July, Jock was hitting 264. Two balls and two strikes. Jock has used many variations of batting stances this year and is still looking for one that is really going to make him consistent. It is not about bat speed or power with him. It is about consistent contact. Pass Sandoval to left. Now going to third is Grandal, and he is out. That will end the inning. The old Cardinal rule is you don't want to make the first out or the third out at third base. But Grandall did. No runs, one hit, one left will go to the seventh. Dodgers three and the Giants nothing.
numbers. Kershaw this afternoon, no run, six hits. He has struck out four. It's time to bring out this old number. When given three runs to work with in his career, he's 112 and eight. He's got a three to nothing lead. Beginning the seventh inning, Hunter Pence is two for two. And it's no balls and a strike to Pence. And if Kershaw gets four runs to work with, it falls into the forget about it category. He's 96 and 0. One ball and one strike. You figure he'd lose one by accident. He hasn't yet. Here's the one one. Pence is three for three. Two singles to center. And that was a little bloop shot. And an infield bleeder. But it's Pence has three hits. Lead. He's the leadoff hitter aboard in the seventh. Frustrating for Clayton, I'm sure. He has not hit the ball hard at him all off of him all day. I'd be shaking my head too. Rockies lead the Padres four to two after four in San Diego. Dodgers and Rockies wrap up the regular season. Next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Denver. Rockies still in the race for that second wild card spot. Arizona secured its place today. Nick Hundley has singled and he has struck out. Kershaw's 75th pitch. Pence leading off first. Nothing in two to Nick Hundley. Brandon Crawford on deck. Eight home runs and 30 runs batted in for Nick Hundley. He's been doing most of the catching second half of the season ever since Brandon Belt went down with a concussion. And so Posey has been playing most of first base and Hundley's been playing most of the time behind the plate. Like you would think also Buster Posey's offensive numbers are better when he plays first. A little more rested legs not quite as heavy compared to the workload of being a catcher. On one and two. Kike Hernandez steps on the bag. And Hundley is retired. May not have been the most graceful of footsteps mission accomplished nonetheless. Kiki does a nice job charging this ball and I think he wants to make sure that he gets it. He realizes it when he looks up and sees the umpire's hand is in the air. Was going to go back but there was already the out call so he continued on with the throw to first. Kiki tagged the bag with the glove and the ball in it. So now there's two out. And Crawford coming up. That's a fourth double play that Kershaw has induced the Giants to hit into. And we're in the seventh inning. That will keep your pitch count down. Mm -hmm. Only four strikeouts, no walks. And this just his 79th pitch. In fact, Kershaw has had only one perfect inning. That was the first. Hasn't had a strikeout since the fourth. But he has had the Giants off balance all afternoon.
Well, that's a replay Crawford can live without. There's going to be some smiles on both dugouts right there. Crawford squaring the bunt and tripping over his own feet. And in trying to regain his balance, he runs out of the camera shot right here. You'll get it. He's lucky he didn't get it in the face if Clayton would have threw a pitch that was more up and in. Right foot catching on the left foot. Well, He's down, Charlie. For those of you in the old Barco lounger, I, I'm, I'm imagining you can relate to Brandon Crawford now. The one and two. In the left. And room for Peterson. That'll do it. Kershaw at the seventh inning stretch has a 3 nothing lead to play with. Dodger baseball on Sportsnet LA is brought to you by BMW. See a Southern California BMW Center today for exceptional offers or visit SoCalBMW.com. A gorgeous fan appreciation Sunday afternoon at Dodger Stadium. It's 81 degrees, nary a cloud in the sky. The leadoff hitter for the Dodgers, Clayton Kershaw. Who has thrown merely 81 pitches through seven innings? He is sacrificed and bounced out. Kershaw in search of his second complete game of the year and his first shutout. If he can do that, it'll be the Dodgers' 16th shutout of the year. And it's two and one. The Kershaw with Taylor on deck and Seeger to follow. Lined into right center field. That's going to drop in for a base hit in front of Hunter Pence. He can do it all. Got a sacrifice bunt down in his last at bat with two strikes. And right here was trying to work the count. Came back to a 2 1 pitch and hits a line drive to right. Now Chris Taylor 0 for 3. Taylor began the month at 305. And he's been running out of gas down to 287. Seeger on deck, Bellinger to follow. And a check swing for Taylor. One ball, one strike.
each team with seven base hits. Grandal has knocked in all three runs for the Dodgers. Sack fly in the second inning and a two run home run in the fourth. Taylor 0 for 3 this afternoon was 0 for 3 last night. And 0 for 4 on Friday night. Playing more games at the big league level this year than ever before. Of course, a spot player last year. Took a little bit of time with Seattle before that. Coming to realize when they say that baseball is like a marathon. It is physically, emotionally, psychologically. It's a long grind. Now if I was sitting on the bench with these guys, I happened to be a veteran player, and I, they started to kind of moan about a little things like that, I would say, look, we're in now and your average in September doesn't matter. It's what your average is going to be in October that's going to help us. Broken bat leader to first base. Posey still has time to throw out Kershaw. Well when you've come this far and you've clinched just about, about everything. And really in July when things were going so well for the Dodgers. Dave Roberts took up the mantra it's all about winning 11 in October and so what has been done to this point this is game 156 oh, is just in the rearview mirror now yeah they've concentrated so much on a daily basis of just believing in the process and that's easy to state when you're winning and it's what you have to state when you're losing. And they have believed in the process and showed up every day for another day of work, no matter what the results were the day before and what people expect the results to be that day. They believe in the process. It's execution over results this year for this team. And Dave Roberts has kept them focused. Well, 91 and 36. And at that point, the Dodgers were being compared with the 116 game winning teams of Cubs the Mariners. I was right there with them. I mean when they were going through that run. People asked me how many you think they're going to end up with and I said one tens a given. Nobody expected them to hit a big skid especially the way they're playing but they did. Into short left Williamson coming on he'll make the catch. But all of it's going to be noise. On October 6th it's going to be fresh start like when you come out of spring this training fresh start ball. when all of a sudden you come back from the all star break fresh start when you go into the postseason. These Giants have won the world championship from a wild card spot. They surely did not have the best season or win as many games as the Dodgers have this year coming from a wild card spot. You can win it coming from anywhere and from any streak. You got to be in it to win it. And here's Bellinger who is one for three. And it's a call strike nothing in one. So if the season ended at a quarter past three on this Sunday afternoon the Dodgers would play the winner of the Rockies and the Diamondbacks in their one game play. -in. Sandoval giving way to Crawford. And that's going to do it. We'll go to the eighth inning. Kershaw and the Dodgers working on a 3 nothing shutout.
7-10, and it's Julio Urias bobblehead night. If you're one of the first 40,000 fans in attendance, you'll get one presented by Arco, the 10th and final bobblehead of the season. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. So we'll go to the eighth. Kershaw's been on top of his game. 81 pitches, 61 for strikes, four strikeouts, hasn't walked anybody. And he has induced four double plays today. Won each of the last three innings. And he is two strikeouts from 200. It would be his seventh season with at least 200 strikeouts. Sandoval on 0 and 1 is now 0 and 2. And he's hitless in two at bats. Mac Williamson on deck. Scherzer had a big day in New York. Struck out 10, walked one, three hits in six innings. He and Kershaw, you got to figure, are one, two, and no particular order. That's strikeout number five for Kershaw. Now 199. Five strikeouts, no walks, one out, nobody on in the eighth. By a patented curve ball, outstanding catching that outside corner. Williamson coming up, and he's two for two. To center field. A long run for Taylor back at the wall and it is gone. A home run for Mac Williamson. There goes the shutout. Williamson is three for three. It's third home run of the year. The Dodger lead three to one. Oh, he got it all too. Picking on a fastball away. Rondall's home run was to center field. Williamson says, I can do you one just like that. Clayton didn't think it should have got out of here, but the ball does carry a little different during the day. The thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Orlando Calixte is pinch hitting. For Ty Block. Williamson's third home run of the big league level. <laughs> to third. Beautiful play turned in by Forsyth. While Turner sits it out another day, Forsythe, a beautiful play at third. They have been spoiled by the play of Justin Turner at third base. Kike Hernandez has filled in over there and been outstanding, and Logan Forsythe is not far behind either one of them. Two out, and Brandon Morrow getting ready. It would appear as if. Kenley Jansen's going to get a day off today. There's a strike, nothing in one. Jansen saved his 40th on Friday night when the Dodgers clinched. It's going to be hard for him to warm up when he's down there next to Chris Woodward on the bench, huh? He is getting a full day off. Watch out. Gorky Hernandez. And the world's highest paid bat boy is retrieving the bat. That's Clayton's way of saying I know it was an accident. We've seen him hustle when he grounds out as a pitcher and not dogging it down to first to save energy and now we even see him hustle as a bat boy. 
I'll trade you the bat for the ball. Corky Hernandez is one for three, a double today. And the count is one and two. Kershaw just misses. It's two and two. Two balls, two strikes, two out. Three one Dodgers, bottom of the eighth. Kershaw. Strike three. Strikeout number seven. And for Kershaw. His 200th of the season. After seven and a half, Dodgers three, and the Giants one. Kershaw coming up next access Sportsnet Dodgers brought to you by your Southern California Nissan dealers John Hartum Jerry Hairston Jr. and Nomar Garcia Parra will break down this series finale Charlie. Well the Dodgers can hang on another inning they'll win their 99th game of the season. And Kershaw getting congratulations. 200 career strikeouts. By the looks of it, Dave Roberts has told Clayton, thank you and a job well done. To Kershaw, three outs away from going 18 and four. Brandon Morrow is warming in the Dodger bullpen. Kyle Crick is now on in relief for the Giants. And Granderson leads it off and takes a strike. It's nothing in one. And again, those numbers are what they say they are. When Kershaw gets three runs of offense to play with, he's about to go 113 and eight. If the Dodger bullpen could get three silly little outs in the ninth. Checking in with pitching coach Rick Honeycutt. Granderson slaps it to the left it's one and two Kershaw goes eight innings one run eight hits six strikeouts no walks just 93 pitches this is one of those games if an additional inning was needed out of Kershaw they easily could have gone to him with just 93 pitches in eight 
But he's got one more start before the postseason begins on Friday, October the 6th. Once the big lead was developed in the National League West, it was all then played under the backdrop of October, and it will continue that way. And that's why Clayton's not coming out in the ninth. Only one team can win 11 games in the postseason. And that is how the Dodgers have basically from early August late July early August when they were extending their lead to what 21 games the focus was on how to best construct the roster keep people healthy mm -hmm. all to win 11 and they're going to want to crescendo at the right time. Granderson today is one for three. He scored a run. Gobbled by Posey. But Crick is covering, and that's the first out of the inning. Third baseman number 11. Logan Giants Marsan. will have Kelby Tomlinson, Buster Posey, and Hunter Pence coming up in the ninth. In the top half of the eighth inning in Seattle this afternoon. Indians four and the Mariners two. Colorado's got a four to two lead in San Diego playing in the sixth inning. And there is Morrow. Boy he's had some years. No balls and two strikes to Logan Forsythe. Andre Ethier on deck to pinch hit. Kyle Crick, the third giant pitcher of the day. Forsyth on one and two. Forsyth hitting 227. Kershaw loose and relaxed. Puig and Austin Barnes for a bubblegum at one another. There's a one two the foul off to the right now. Kyle Crick has held right handed hitters this year to a one eighty batting average eleven for sixty one. Missing outside. Two and two. Well, some of these young giants are auditioning for roles for next year. And frankly, from about the All Star break on, they've been doing it. Just foul. Dodgers and Padres tomorrow night. The first of the final three regular season games here at Dodger Stadium. Travis Wood and you Darvish first pitch 7-10 Tuesday night. To Nelson Lamette and Alex Wood. Clayton Richard who just had his contract extended a couple of years with the Padres pitches on Wednesday night. And in center field Hernandez. Second out of the eighth. Clayton Richard, Rich Hill on Wednesday, Thursday at off day, a flight up to Denver. 
Final three games of the regular season with the Rockies, and here is Ethier to pinch hit. And before he gets there, Bruce Bochy and that unmistakable gait of his. We're going to take the ball. Thank Crick for the afternoon's work. We're going to take a break. Come back. Two outs. Nobody on. Bottom of the eighth. Dodgers 3-1. Second appearance. And once Ethier was announced, Bochi goes to Okert. And once Okert comes in, Kyle Farmer is going to pinch hit for Andre Ethier. These are the luxuries, of course, you have when you can expand the roster to about 2,000 players per side. Well, well, actually, only 40, but yeah. <laughs> it seems that way. You know, Farmer has been very successful in this role and has proven to the Dodgers that his offense has really come around from his minor league days. Huge improvements this year with the bat, which has afforded him this opportunity in the big leagues, which he has taken advantage of. Two out, nobody on, and Farmer takes a strike. It's nothing in one. outside well last night farmer made his first big league start at first base in his major league debut a walk-off double in the 11th inning well that's gonna do that Morrow is gonna pitch the ninth Dodgers 3-1 
Kershaw now three outs away from going 18 and four. And 11 and three following a Dodger loss. He struck out six today. He has 200 strikeouts on the season for his seventh year in his career with at least 200 strikeouts. Brandon Morrow hoping to notch his second save of the year. Jansen with the day off. And Morrow has really just been a model of consistency all year. Got a fantastic ERA, a great, great fastball. The breaking ball is electric also, and he has been very, very consistent. And a huge responsibility right here because a chance to get a save for Clayton Kershaw to get his 18th win. That'd be number one in the major leagues. Scherzer got his 16th today. Clayton still be two wins ahead of him and an ERA that's much lower. So it'll really help out his teammate in the Cy Young race. Denard Spann to lead it off. Pinch hitting for Kelby Tomlinson. Ninth inning. Dodgers the 3-1 lead. Giants have actually out hit the Dodgers this afternoon, 8-7. Spann takes a strike, and it's nothing and one. Morrow, 48 strikeouts, just eight walks in 41 and two thirds innings. Got up there with some gusto at 98. It's nothing and two. Posey on deck, Pence to follow. We're in the ninth, and the Dodgers three outs away from their 99th victory of the year. No balls and two strikes. Ball strike three. First out of the ninth. Excellent pitch from Brandon Morrow. His natural fastball really has a little more cut action there, but he came on the inside of that ball, had a little tailing action right on the corner. Dodgers won 99 games in 1963. So they're two outs away from equaling that year's total. And now one out away. Dodgers won 100 games in 1941, won 101 when they were known as the Superbas in 1899. So the Dodgers are closing in on some high rent district. Two out and here's Pence who's three for three today. Morrow delivers a strike and it's nothing in one. Morrow in search of his second Save of the year in his second since 2009. Of course, he came up as a starter. And really has morphed into a, a terrific eighth inning setup guy. A ball, a strike, and two out of the ninth. And the Dodgers now one strike away. One ball, two strikes. That's it. The Dodgers win their 99th. Kershaw wins his 80th, 18th. 88th be quite a trick. His 18th as the Dodgers beat the Giants 3-1, to 42 games.